Well, good day, everybody. So I'm gonna dive in to the Yamaha TTR90, and we're going to take the plastics off, take the seat off, and start getting this ready for the year. So, uh, we're trying a new hat cam today. We'll see how that works. All right, so first thing we got to do is, is uh, here on the fairings, we got to take these off and uh, take all these plastics off and get them ready to go here. So it's just my standard tear apart toolkit here. So I've got a, a little Craftsman socket set. Uh, I've got a bunch of end wrenches that I like to use. Um, I've got a smaller set, and then I've got these two T handles. And so I've got, this is a Motion Pro, I think, or a Tusk, I can't remember which one it is, but it's one of those. It's just got a quarter inch uh, socket on it, and so I can use all these quarter inch sockets there, and then of course I have my T-handle that has a 12, a 10, and then I've got an 8 on this one, and that's usually enough to do a lot of this. So, and then I've got some magnetic trays here, and then for any kind of stubborn screws I have an easy out, and I'm sure we'll end up using that since I haven't torn some of this apart in quite a long time. So we'll go ahead and just start into this. Now those of you that might be wondering what the stand is I've got on here, it's just a scrap old piece of steel that uh, that I've had hanging around. It was an old homemade bench, I believe, for like a, a workout bench. So, um, I don't know, it's it seems to hold the bike okay. It's it's really stable as you can see here. Um, for a small bike, it's it's probably fine. I couldn't put my the DR on there, but so normally what I do is is uh, I just go ahead and stack into one of these trays because uh, I don't really have an issue remembering where stuff goes. Um, luckily on these, there's these bikes are not that complicated. Um, there's not much to them. And so I'm not worried about, you know, forgetting where a screw goes because I have all the documentation I need. And if all else fails, it's just a matter of finding the screw that doesn't fit. And uh, so not too big a deal. <sighs> One of these days I might decide to use a drill instead of a... Instead of a one of these hand tools, but I don't know, the drill works, drills work fine I, either way. Um, so it looks like I've got a couple of bolts there to take out. I think we'll swap to a to a ratchet wrench here. I think I have to switch out to a 10 millimeter if I remember right. Might be 12. It's 10 underneath the seat. Now I try to use gloves whenever I'm taking a part. Um, I very rarely use gloves when I'm putting them back together, but but I'm usually using either either nitrile gloves or or just some mechanics gloves. Um, of course, the main reason for that is just to protect my hands from any kind of garbage that I end up getting into. That was quite loose. It's a good thing I'm doing this. Could have lost it. Oops. Better use the same tray for all this stuff. Trying to remember how this comes off. Oh yes. Just basically snaps together. So 
So plan is with these plastics to uh, get them freshened up and uh, we'll do that with, uh, we'll clean them first with some just some simple green and then water and soap and uh, that should cut all the dirt and everything off of them and then we'll take the uh, at least my initial plan is to use a heat gun to remove these stickers um, I'm not sure if we'll actually put stickers back or not looks like these are actually broke um, or if we'll just leave it plain I think we'll probably end up just leaving it plain but we'll see what happens So you can see this thing's been pretty beat up. We, uh, it's been dropped probably a thousand times. I think this break was a drop in the winter time, so it was cold and caused the plastics to break. But luckily, it's uh, attached down here underneath, and so it wasn't that big a deal. Um, and if I thought that we really wanted this this bike for nice things, I'd probably replace these plastics, but. I don't see any reason to. Now that I'm looking at this, we've also got these forks to deal with. I'm not sure what we'll do there. Um, same with the rear shock. I think we'll just probably end up re-greasing that stuff. We'll check the fork seals. It doesn't look like we're leaking any oil. But the seals are probably need to be replaced or maybe just cleaned. Um, kind of depends. I mean, the suspension on this bike is pretty well garbage anyway, so it really doesn't matter what you do. It's always going to be pretty much garbage. But I do want this bike as safe as I can make it since I've got my kids on it and myself from time to time. So. You know, a big component of safety on a bike is the suspension, so. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this gas off. I think for ease and convenience, I'm gonna slip the tube off of the petcock rather than off the carburetor. Now I'm going to flip, take my gloves off here. I'm going to get a pair of nitriles on. Now gas and oil and things like that, it's kind of deceptive and we get uh, kind of, uh, you know, I, I know growing up when I was a kid, we took apart cars and put them back together and never wore any gloves. But the reality is, is that all this stuff is pretty dang bad for your skin. Uh, you know, it seems like everything nowadays can cause you cancer, but more importantly, uh, it can really damage your skin when you're getting to be middle-aged like myself. Uh, that stuff becomes more important, so I'm trying to be a little bit better uh, behaved, if you want to call it that. Uh, and... Uh, I'm try to do that. So here's some trick. Here's uh, this is some gas uh, in a bottle. You can see it's pretty varnished. This is from another another project that I had. But I've got just a little piece of uh, extra fuel tubing uh, in here that I just keep in the bottle. Um, and that. And of course, the purpose of this is just to to uh, to drain some of this out of here. So I've got my drain hose here. Let me grab a. Phillips. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drain this float bowl. So oh, looks like I need a different screwdriver. Okay. So this will drain the float bowl as well as that line, hopefully. So I can make as little mess as possible. So I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. 
And I don't know, I guess Gatorade bottles probably aren't the, an approved gas holding device, but I don't know. It's what I use. Um, I've watched it for quite a while. This gas has probably been in here for six, eight months. Um, so I'm not too concerned with not having a, not having an approved container. I mean, the, the, the plastic on these Gatorade bottles are pretty thick. I don't think I would use a, a cheap Nestle water bottle or something like that because those are such flimsy plastic but but uh, so I don't know let's see so we're gonna need a something to pull this hose with boy it's pretty tight on there oh, there we go yeah Looks like that hose, that line needs to be replaced anyway. And looks like the petcock's not in good shape because it shouldn't be running fuel. Well, in that case, I'm gonna just turn this on. We'll just drain this this tank. Hopefully, I don't have too much gas in there. I think this is a 1.1 gallon tank, and I'm running a whole lot of fuel off of this. So, I think, yeah. This bottle's not big enough. And this gas can's pretty much empty, but... <laughs> uh, okay. So you can see here I've got my finger over it. While I think about this, I think the best thing to do is to pull the tank off, if I can do it one-handed, and then pour the gas out. So, well that was already disconnected. Okay, so it looks like some 10 mil. Should have my Motion Pro wire wrench. This would be a lot easier. Has all three sizes you need, and all in one. I had to get that out of my bag here in a minute. Like a little wiggle, and that gets a, lot, a whole lot easier. Okay, yeah, that tank's almost full. All right. Well, this is probably the slowest way to do this. This is fresh gas. We just put it in, I don't know, a few weeks ago. So, wonder if any of you are wondering what I've done here is I've turned this to reserve. You might be able to see there. That way we get as much out of this tank as I possibly can because uh, I'm going to have to pull the petcock and work on it since it's not turning off properly. Hopefully it's just a little bit of cleaning or, or removing some varnish and that'll take care of it. Usually that's the case with these petcocks. And I'll have to replace the fuel line and uh, should be good on fuel. I've noticed this bike isn't really picky on fuel. I've put, I've had it to where we've let it sit for a while and the fuel got pretty bad and it still ran amazingly. Okay, so now that we're getting down to the nitty gritty, the gloves are much more important. And uh, I really try to keep a fairly organized garage. I'm not very good at it, but this is my attempt at being somewhat organized. Um, it does make it nicer, but with uh, 
four kids, two of which are really tinkering boys, it can be challenging to keep anything in line in there. So you can see here we've got on the shock, looks like possibly the loss of something going on there. You got all the scratching in here. We may need to be, it may just be a spring. It may not be even a shock really. Um, I'll have to do a little research and find out about that. But that scratching there may be, might be an issue. Um, and that, but I mean these, like I say, these have been pretty trashed. So we're going to go ahead and remove these stickers. Uh, since we really don't need the old Utah ones, we haven't had to do a Utah since we bought the thing. We only have all in live in Wyoming since then. And we're going to go after this chain. I think we'll go ahead and do that first. So uh, the brakes on this I just refreshed last year and they feel really good. They're still nice and springy. So I think we're in good shape there. Um, the uh, oil was done recently on it so I'm not too worried about that. We'll just double check that oil and see where we're at. Black. We might have to do a little change on this. I don't like leaving that too long because that can be a real problem. So I'm just going to check these electronics real quick. Everything looks like it's in pretty good shape. There's nothing really wearing. Um, I've never really had to do much of anything to this and so I get kind of spoiled. Um, because it's just been such a low maintenance bike. so. Now these screws are the ones that in the past have given me some real hassle and unfortunately because this is a Japanese bike the screws are probably JIS and so a, a normal screwdriver doesn't, you can see that doesn't fit great and I don't have a JIS screwdriver so and you can see this one's actually really rounded off um, I might have issues getting that off period but what I'm going to do is use an easy out so if you haven't seen or used one of these, these are uh, the God's gift to motorcycles, but mechanics as well. Um, but these really work well. So I've got two different styles. Um, I've got a, a real compact one, this one here, and it uses uh, these bits here, and they're made for extracting screws as well as just your regular bits. Um, and that's been really helpful, especially because I keep it in this little tiny toolbox that stays in a vehicle during the when we're going somewhere. And this is my bigger one that stays here in the garage. And uh, I'm just going to make sure these fit pretty good, and they do. And all you do with this is you're going to apply a pressure to the direction you want to turn it. So if you want to turn it clockwise, you can. If you want to turn it counterclockwise, you can. And then you just smack the end of it with a hammer. And what it does when you when you hit that, it it springs it forward, and so it's like an impact wrench without the power. So, I don't know if you saw that, but that just knocked that one loose really nicely. This is the one that I'm worried about. I can do this without hitting my hand. So what you have to do is push it in and turn it to the left. There we go. That's got it. Perfect. I'm going to see if I can't replace that. So this has a, a half inch socket on here. So you can put half inch sockets on there as well, but um, but you can see that works just a trick for uh, taking off screws that are that are not doing too well. I've got a little bolt kit. I'm gonna wonder if I can find a bolt that would replace this because that bolt's seen better days, as you can probably see there. Okay, and then uh, we'll take this chain guard off. The 
You know, I, I never understood why people use T-handles until I actually bought one and then it's pretty tough to go back uh, once you have used one because they just are convenient. And uh, so I have several now that I've started working on bikes and saw people using them. And what I try to do here is I have a little bit of a rhyme and a method to things. I put basically like size screws together and try to try to match things up as best I can. You can see I've got these two longer ones, all these shorter ones. I, you know, it's the method that I use and I usually don't have extra parts when I'm done, so uh, maybe it works, I guess. So there's that chain guard. Get the lower chain guard out of here. This chain guard has obviously seen better days, but it still seems to function. It looks like we're missing a bolt here, too. So, not too worried about it, but I probably have an extra or a spare hanging around that I can put in there. These are just little 8mm bolts. So this, this cart, you may be wondering about that, it's a wire cart. I'll put a link for it down in the description. It's been a great cart for as cheap as it was. Just a cheap little roll around cart, but it's great. I put all my parts on there. I put a lot of tools on there and I can put it wherever I want. Just a convenient thing to have. All right, so it looks like we need to take this rear wheel, loosen it up. There's our master link right there. This is the clip style master link. Um, and that I'll have to look at the new chain and see what that is. Um, but it looks like this is put on right. You can see here it's the open end of the clip is toward the, the back. So as this goes around, it would only push the clip on, not take it off. And then we've just got these four bolts holding that one on. And it looks like just a circlip holding the front one on. So, but you can see what poor condition these sprockets are in. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and loosen up these bolts right here and uh, we'll get her done. I think those are a 17. They might be a 15. We'll see here. 17. There's a 15. Yeah, it looks like 17. So. Okay, and I put those there, and then uh, probably just going to need a, a 10 mil. So this is the chain tensioners. Okay. So, you know, there's lots of different bikes with different tensioner uh, methodologies and things. This uses this uh, little scale right here. And so the big important thing there is just to make sure your alignment is correct. So I'm going to grab my little soft hammer here. And just tap this, this bolt. You can see that knocked it so it was a little bit better. And then I'll just hit that forward. Loosen that chain up. So now that's probably loose enough to, to take off. And uh, so now what we'll do is... We're going to take that chain off. I'm going to grab a pair of needle nose. Since I don't have a master link uh, tool, this might be tricky. Let's try a pair of these. I don't even know what you call these. Big wedge top pliers, but. Lineman's pliers, maybe? 
I don't know. You know, then I think about it, this probably would have been easier before I loosened the chain. Okay, so that's the one knocked loose now. Grab just a small screwdriver here. Okay, so there's my link. washer comes off and then the master link comes out okay. this master link's probably a good thing to keep the chains probably not so there we go and off with the chain okay so that'll go in the junk bin Now these here look like 15s, but it looks like you can see here there's a piece of metal there. And those are bent around. That's so these don't, don't loosen up. So I'm going to grab a, a larger screwdriver and a hammer. And we're going to take these down. Because you will not get the, those bolts off otherwise. do is I'm going to pick this thing up and rotate it so I can get to these other two. Okay, there's one and there's one. Okay, I'm gonna grab my wrench here. I think these are a 12 millimeter. Nope, must be a 14. So you learn pretty quickly when you're working on these. <clears throat> Unlike a lot of things, they actually used a fair amount of ingenuity when they designed these bikes. They're a simple machine, but they uh, you know made these so you've got only really a few sizes of bolts to worry about. And so that makes it really nice. So And I don't know what I was thinking, but I definitely do have to take this tire off or the wheel off since I need to get this sprocket off as well. So, but just for convenience, I'm going to hold, leave it in here just while I'm working on this, just so I can get this off of here properly. Okay, knock that one loose, and that one's loose. Okay, I'll have to look up the torque specs, the torque specs on that one. And as much as I try to keep a pretty clean garage, I always end up scattering tools and parts and everything else all over the place. Doesn't matter what I do, it seems like. I always have that same problem, so. Okay, so. Now I've got some help. Wyatt and Jacob are here. So we're going to knock this, this, this bolt out that's holding the rear, it's the rear axle, is with axle bolt. So I'll just take this large Phillips head. Okay, you want to grab those, Wyatt? And put them in this bolt pan right there. Okay, now as soon as this comes through, so I don't have you do it right, just hold this right here. 
probably going to knock down just a little bit and it comes off. I just don't want to drop it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to knock it all the way through. So. Okay. There we go. Oh, that's greasy. Yeah. Yeah, I greased it really well last time. Huh. So this is the axle bolt. And it's covered in grease, so I'm just going to put it here and kind of hang it through this wire here. Okay, Wyatt, you got that motorcycle? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up. Oop, careful, it'll flip forward on us. We may have to switch. Oh, I forgot all this stuff. Okay, so you want to grab a needle nose pair of pliers up there on the board there. Okay, and we can take this cotter pin out. Let me do it. Like that cotter pin really needs to be replaced. I'll put that in that dish as well. And then, Jacob, could you hand me that uh, T handle? Yes. Thank you. Do you want to do this, Wyatt? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and take that bolt off there. Careful. There you go. Should be easy now. Yep. Good. Okay. And then you can loosen this one up as well. And that's probably going to be the 10 mil on the end. So. Other way. Other way. There we go. Righty tidy, lefty loosey, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll loosen those. Oh, you know what? We can just. Take a look at these brakes anyway while we're doing this. Okay, can you steady the bike just to make sure it doesn't fall down? Okay. Sprocket. And then what I'm going to do. This? Did you this stand? Whoops. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I was going to lean it up against your leg, but oh. that's okay. Okay, so for, for right now. Oh, that's pretty steady like that. So, okay. So there's the the hub. Ah, so let's show this here. Can you see that? Okay, Jake. So I don't know if you can see this really well in the video, but if you look at these teeth, they're really worn. You can see the kind of J shape to the to the, all these. That's why we need to replace this. So, long overdue for a replacement. So, we can get our new ones out. So, here's the new. Here is a brand new fancy dancy, and looks like it fits. And we'll go ahead and grab this hardware. So we have to start this on this side like that. And then push it up and then run it in. There we go. Okay, just want to make sure these bolts aren't sitting up off of there. And then we'll use the good old lug nut stud star pattern and just tighten these up as evenly as possible.
right there. Sprocket nuts. 20 pounds right there. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, so that's 20 pounds, and that's on the DR650. So I'm guessing 20 is probably about right, and that feels right for how tight they were to take off. So I think 20 pounds will be all right. What do you think, Wyatt? I'm going to grab this torque wrench out of there. So we're going to need a 14 mil. I don't have metric on my impact sockets, but... That feels pretty good. But not great. So, we'll just use an adapter. So I've got an adapter here that goes from half inch to quarter inch, or to three eighths. And then, where's that T-handle? Here it is. Okay, got her. This is... Oh, I didn't realize we had that on there. <laughs> metric. Kilos. But yeah, this is foot pounds on this side. Oh, it's supposed to be foot pounds? I yep. could have told me that. So we're going to go up to, this is 20, so we're just going to take the zero and bring it up to 20 right there. Do you see that? Yeah. So we've got 20 right there, and it's got a little line that kind of jogs down and goes to the center. And we'll take the zero that's on here, and this zero lines up, that's and 20. Push the button. And just twist that a little bit to lock it into place. Then I oh, this is probably, there we go. So I'm going to hold this. Just don't rip my hands off, okay? So we're going to torque. Okay, stop. Okay, and then go to this one. Okay, stop. Yep. Okay, stop. So we don't want to tighten them all down at once like that. This is tough, hard enough for me to hold it like that. I think we'll go ahead and put it on the bike, and then we'll torque them down the rest of the way. So... This goes in here like this. Look good? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this spacer went right here. So, okay, do you want to go ahead and study that bike again? Okay, Jacob, could you grab the axle nut? It's right there in the front part of that, right to the left front. Nope, the big nut, great big bolt. The one that's all greased up. So just touch the top of it. Go to right to the left, right there, yep. Oh no! <laughs> Did it goober you? Okay. And this still looks well greased, so I'm not gonna grease it up again. Like say we just did it last fall, so. Okay, that spacer right there, Wyatt, do you wanna grab it? get some gloves on, huh? Can we get the hammer and pound it in? Uh, try to avoid that on the way in. Or better to wiggle it through. There we go. You're in. Okay. Now we can go ahead and set this back in here. It's just a stupid little bench thing that was at the shop. Okay, so now we need the, uh, oh, we forgot the spacer. Darn it. These here. So take that. It needs to go on this bolt. I forgot about that. No, this bolt was with the washer. Huh? No, the washer was on the other side. Okay, you get the bike? Hold it somewhere that doesn't move. There we go. <laughs> you okay? Yep. Okay, and then this goes like that. Okay. One more time. Second time's a charm, right? Third. Hopefully not third. Okay. Yeah, and then 
if I remember right, the washer was on the outside. Sure, because I'm pretty sure it wasn't off. How sure are you? <laughs> are you positive? And your friends are positive. Are you sure? I'm positive. Alright. So, you want to grab a... Let's see. I got this one here. One of these days, I'm going to pick up some circlips. So I'm just going to put that into gear. Some circlip pliers would be really good about right now. You want to grab me that other, another small flat screwdriver? So if you don't have, have circlip pliers, this is how you do it. Not that I enjoy it. A lot easier with circlip pliers. There we go. So circlip, and then this pulls off here, and we can ready for a new sprocket. Okay, the sprocket is ready. There you go. And where did it go? Put your fingers off. There you go. Always close them back up. Okay. You want to put it on? This is smaller. Oh no, it is. Huh. It may be good just because it's warm. That's interesting. So, this is the old sprocket versus the new. No, they're the same. They look different. Sizes. They look different when you first start looking at them, but when you put them right up against each other, they're the same. Okay. You can definitely tell this one. This is the stock gearing. Um, yeah. It's a 14, I think. Yeah, 14 and 35. So a 14, 35. 14 on the front, 35 on the back. And then we've got a 420 chain. So go ahead and put that on there. Jake, did you want to put some of this together? Or? If you want, whichever you want to do. Okay. All right. Looks like we got a master link. Looks like this is nice and greased. Can you get it? It'll only go on one way. It looks right. I just think there's different sized teeth, so I think we're just gonna have to try it different positions here. There we go. Boy, that's really, really tight. Tolerance is there. Okay, so there's that. And then circlip right there. I think, I'm not sure, but I think circlips really should be replaced. Um, but I don't have one, so maybe we'll have to order one. But this feels really good. It's actually in really good, really good strong circlips. Maybe circlips don't have to be. Maybe it's cotter pins that are supposed to be all the time. Okay, so there's that. Should we get the chain on now? Here's the old chain. Yeah. So, I'll get this out of gear. Now when I say wide, I'm going to have you put it in gear, okay? So I'm going to put this here on the, on the back. Okay. And I'm just going to run this chain up around this this deal. Be careful, it's really greasy. Is it in gear? No. There. Apartment 
number four of our next to it, like a female. Who is unable to eat anything down. She has been vomiting all day. Someone's done. Okay, go ahead and put it in gear. Okay. So with that in gear, it should hold that there for the most part. So now we're going to put this master link in here. Okay. We've got a washer. Okay, Wyatt, do you have any idea which way this is supposed to go? Okay, so this has a clip on here. Where do you think this should go? I think it should go this way or this way. I'm gonna see. This way. Okay, why do you think that? Because this thing has a little divot. Yeah. But so does this one. Yep. But this one has a bigger. Mm -mm, they're the same. Really? Mm -hmm. Different. They're identical. Any other ideas? You're right. Just wondering if you know why you're right. Okay, the reason we're going right. to put this with the open end towards the back is because this chain goes this way, right? Because it drives oh. this wheel forward, right? So as it goes around, it's going to run this way, right? So as the chain comes around, why would we want the open end to the back? Rip it out. Because if you do it this way, yeah, it'll pop it off. Or the that chances are good. greater you pop it off. So you always want to have it this way. So we're going to slide it over the first one and and push it down. And then we're going to need some plyos. I think needle nose will work. There we go. Chain's on. Now we need to sit the we need to set the sag. Now the sag on this is how far the chain can sag down. See, I can put my finger in here. I'll go ahead and take it out of gear. Oh yeah. And uh, Let's fix that bike. three fingers is the is the rule usually off the swing arm. So that feels pretty good. Okay, I'll pull a stand out of there. Okay. Then of course this is a safety thing, so you really don't want to mess around with. Um, you really want to take your time when you're setting this because if you break a chain going fast, this can be a very dangerous thing to have happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to loosen up now on this. I'm gonna go feels a lot better. Okay, so now I'm gonna set. Now that's a little too loose. So now I can go back. Okay, wink, we're about there. That's three fingers right there off the swing arm. Still feels pretty darn loose though. Yeah, I think we need to go just a touch further. And that's going to make it halfway between the middle mark and the one towards the front of the middle mark. Okay, so we'll adjust this one. Yeah, here. Counterclockwise. Okay, just a touch further. Gone a little bit more. Perfect. I'll go back a little bit. Keep going. And so you can see what I'm doing is I'm pushing on the tire this way to make sure we've got tension on that bolt. Okay, so we'll check this again. That feels perfect. So, okay. So with that, we can now tighten this bolt up. Okay, how's that looking? That side looks good. Okay, once again, this is a 17. 
you want to grab a 17 socket out of that box? Do you remember what the uh, torque setting was we found for this axle nut? Was it 43? Is that right? Top one. Here you go. It should be that one. Here you go. Is it set? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hold on to this nut here with my wrench. Do you want to torque that down? Okay, now what we want to do is when I, when I tell you I want you to stop, just kind of keep an eye on it. I want to make sure that that stays between, halfway between the middle mark and the one forward from the middle mark. I'm at 20. This is a ratchet, dude. Okay. Alright, now before we totally torque it down, how's our mark look? It's good. Okay, looks good there. Hard to see on that side. There you go. Okay, go ahead. Let's check it. Okay, do it again. Okay, let's see. Oh, <laughs> we need to adjust the torque wrench. It's only at 20 pounds. That's why it felt really sad. Okay, so we'll go up to 43, right? Okay, so there's 40, and we'll just go up to three past that. There you go. Okay. Okay, this is going to make a click when it gets the right weight. There we go. And then go ahead and remember double check always. There you go. Okay, we'll give it a second here. Okay, make sure all this feels nice and snug, it does. We'll double check our sag here. That feels good. All right, just try check that torque one more time. There you go, perfect. All right, you wanna put that socket back and the adapter. And I think we'll call it a day. So, we have replaced the chain. We have taken all the plastics off and our next big project is we're going to start uh, putting stuff back. So we got to clean up and, and, and take off all the stickers for all those plastics. We'll get them put back on. So, yeah, that feels good. And Jake, it's going to go much further now. So we'll watch that chain. Make sure we keep an eye on that chain, okay, guys? Remind me when you check it pretty regular. Okay. After driving it for a couple hours, we need to make sure we check it and adjust it. It'll probably have to be adjusted. Is it going to go, like, a bit faster? No, it should no. be the same but a lot smoother. It should go a lot better. should make a big difference. Um, you'll notice now, we before when we had backed it up, remember it caught? See how smooth and nice it is now? So that's how it should be. It's totally silent now. Pretty cool, huh? So, so here's our order of operations, and I think we'll write this down or something, but we've got to uh, finish up doing that, we've got to do the rear foot pegs. We've got to, uh, looks like we bent the shifter here, and so we'll try bending that back. We'll just carefully bend that back to center, I think. Um, the, uh, we'll clean up, of course, the rest of the frame and stuff before we put everything back there. Uh, new grips. And uh, we'll replace we'll replace probably those rear foot pegs. Uh, this is awesome. Yeah, and then we've got to lube all the cables, so the brake and the driveline cables. We need to lube those and possibly we replace them. The yeah, and then we'll mess with that carburetor. It's gonna we'll, we'll have to get the tank back on and everything for that. But we'll probably pull that carburetor off and play with it a little bit, see if we can to work better. The fuel petcock on the gas tank needs to be fixed. Um, and we'll take all these stickers and everything off, take all the stickers off the plastics, clean up the plastics, and we should be in good shape. All right, so we fixed one problem on the TTR-90, so to stay tuned for the next time, we'll, uh, we'll get some more work done on this project, and uh, hope we'll see you on the trails.